right? Effort is between you and you, right? I can sit there and I can judge your effort, but I can't really control it that much. Like I can try to inspire you, but really effort comes from within. And when you try to do everything to the best of your ability and be the best every day you step out in the field, right? Good things will happen, right? Your teammates will respect you. You know, you'll, you'll start increasing the stat sheet. You'll get those, those numbers will increase, right? And eventually if everybody's on the same page doing the same thing to the best of their ability with maximum effort, right? As a team, you guys will elevate and hopefully uh, win a state championship. Underneath, if he approaches underneath, you want to get to the top, okay? Here we go, ball here, and then run. I was actually introduced to lacrosse in seventh grade. Really active football and basketball player and actually played baseball. Lacrosse is just so active and, and you know, the constant movement, the, a lot of similarities between that and basketball. Um, and that just kind of really attracted me to that sport over baseball, right? The sport has an opportunity to give you guys a lot, but more importantly, like, morals and discipline and, and like all those values that I got from this sport really came, you know, became very important in my life going through some adversities. Yeah, I never really thought too far ahead. Uh, the pro league wasn't a really a big deal when I was in high school, or at least I didn't know much about it. And then once I got into college, right, college is like the biggest stage in, in my opinion. So that was something I really just concentrated on. I wanted to be the best, you know, which is ironically our motto at Maryland. And and, and win a national championship. That's phenomenal. I mean, it's, it, I, I, you know, when I was deciding on what college to go to, I, I had some options and, and really Maryland was just like a great fit for me. When I was out here in Chicago and I was still playing for the Shamrocks and the Machine, my buddy used to say, he's like, do, do you think you're ever gonna regret making the decision? Cause you don't, you're not making, you know, a hundred thousand bucks. You're not making great money doing what we were doing. I said, absolutely not. Because the experiences and, and the opportunities that I get from traveling and meeting different people, I said, I, I would, wouldn't trade this for anything. I wanted to take the opportunity at that age from 22 to pretty much 29 to experience everything I can experience. And, and that, this was the opportunity to do so. It gave me the platform to not only travel around the country, but meet, you know, meet great people and, and play a sport that I love. All right, we're here at the Border Wars Tournament right here in Aurora, Illinois. Um, we're here to check out some of the teams. Got the Bombers competing against HSE, which is a good Indiana squad. We also have Carmel, uh, another really good Indiana team. So um, definitely looking forward to the event and hopefully we can uh, find some good candidates for our ACES program. Yeah, so I spent two days at the Border Wars uh, tournament, and I thought it was great. I thought there was a lot of quality players there, some really good programs. Um, got to connect with a few of the coaches and kind of describe what I was, the purpose of me being out here was. You know, a lot of us know, know about Trilogy, or a lot of them know about Trilogy. Um, so it was kind of an easy segue into what we're doing, and, and we have a really good uh, reputation out there in the lacrosse world, so I think they were very appreciative of me being out there in person and, and kind of uh, scouting their players and hopefully they're gonna send some of those guys to our event. This is a good tournament though, this is pretty good lacrosse. So a little bit into my uh, professional career, uh, unfortunately I was introduced to some prescription medication for pain and from that led to into a full-blown addiction. Um, it, it was stripping me of my ambitions, my desire to work harder, to be better in the sport. And I really, I lost the passion for my sport um, because of this addiction. Um, from that point on, um, after battling it for about three, three years, a little over three years, um, I made the decision to uh, go and get help. And that was probably the smartest and best thing I've ever did in my life. Being drilled into myself that I can control certain things and I can't control others, right? I need to focus on what I can control and some of those things were, were easy, right? Or they sound easy. They're simple, but they're not always the easiest. And, you know, once I can kind of identify those simple things to change, I, I kind of put my athletic mindset towards it, attacked it like I would attack a game plan or, or a game. And from that, it really kind of catapulted into a, a long-term recovery. Fortunately today, I, I'm glad to say I've learned a lot of things from that experience and that really prepared me for the next real hardship that I was going to experience um, about a year and a half later. Everything he's done, 
Uh, I think he's a great role model for a lot of, a lot of young athletes and a lot of young players. So, Bill McGloin, gentlemen. Round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Coach, and thank you, Coach. Uh, you guys are doing pretty good. I saw you guys playing out there. I'll tell you what, the Illinois lacrosse has really kind of elevated from when I was playing with the Shamrocks. I used to come to some practices, worked in the area um, with some of the clubs, and, and you guys are really kind of, you know, the leaders, you know, growing the game in this area, right? Remaining positive. What I always tell my players is control the controllables. What can we control? We control our focus. When you do mental preparation, right? Read that scouting report, watch that film, pick up on these little nuances. Preparation leads to confidence, confidence leads to success, right? So if you want success, you need to prepare, which will install some confidence, right? Next thing you got is your attitude, right? You make a bad play, hey, guess what? Everybody makes bad plays, right? Nobody's perfect, you're gonna make a bad play, your teammate's gonna make a bad play. The question is, what are you gonna do next? Are you gonna sit there, mope, put your head it's down, deep out, or are you gonna go out and you're gonna, you're gonna make the next play, right? You're gonna be positive, right? Support each other and make that next great play. The last thing you can control that, and I said it a little bit over there, is your effort. Right? You give that maximum effort, right? good things happen. Right? If even, I tell my players, even if you make mistakes, if you do it at maximum effort, that's okay. That's a good mistake because you're doing it to the best of your ability. I thought the, the program was really good. I thought the kids were really enthusiastic, enthusiastic got, got into it, needed me to get some hydration here. So I was at, I was at my friend's house uh, down the shore at Stone Harbor and before that, I know other people noticed that I was being kind of weird mentally. And I got on a bike, and when I was riding the bike, I actually rode it right into a bush. Um, and at that point, it was like something's really not right here. We went to the beach, coming off the beach, I went to get back on the bike, and I fell getting on the bike. And <laughs> my friend, his wife, and, and my girlfriend, they start laughing at me, and I get mad. Because I was like, I'm an athlete, This is uh, something's not right here. And then from that point on, um, that friend was like, hey, you should go get some, that checked out. Something's not right with you. Um, I get a biopsy done, and they diagnosed me with neurosarcoidosis, which is an autoimmune disease of your central nervous system. You guys can play some offense, OK? Defensively, maybe a little bit of a review, but what do we want to do? What's our goal defensively? You know, perseverance, right? Um, you know being accountable for my actions. Like, what, what can I do to make this better, right? You know, there was obviously some fear tied into that, but I immediately took my athletic experiences and, and applied it to what I was doing, you know, what, what I was being dealt with here. Um, so they had to do that emergency surgery. When I came out of that process, I was really unaware of what was going on, but, you know, I realized I was paralyzed on the right side. And when I kind of understood that, you know, I was very concerned. That's when fear really crept in because I'm an active guy. I live an active lifestyle. So to, to take away, you know, my ability of movement on the right side of my body, that was like, that was a nightmare to me. And I wasn't accepting the fact that I wasn't going to be able to live an active lifestyle. So from that point on, I, I just kind of attacked everything, whether it was, you know, physical rehab, um, physical speech therapy, um, all the things that I had to do, I did it to the 10th degree. And once I kind of got through that, I looked back and I realized, you know, to kind of going through both those adversities, uh, there are opportunities for growth. I can only grow so much on my own, um, with, under my control. But when you're presented with these obstacles in life, those are opportunities for a growth spurt. And that's kind of how I approached it. And, and the one thing I kind of took away from it when I got back into coaching was control your controllables. That's what I tell my players a lot of the time. And what can you control? You can't control the refs, you can't control the bounce of the ball all the time, you can't control your teammates, you can't control your opponent, but what you can control is yourself. 